Welcome to the Badger Maker Show. Uh, this is part one of the 2001 Space Odyssey Clavius Spacesuit Replica make. Parts two and three are covered in its separate videos. Part two is the backpack and the chest box and uh, the electronics that are on the inside of those. And part three covers the suit and how it was sewn. Uh, so if you've ever been confused uh, by the ending in 2001 A Space Odyssey, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you haven't seen the movie, go ahead and do so. And then uh, you'll be hooked on the movie as one of the best science fiction movies of all time. And then come back and hit the subscribe button then. And you'll be addicted as I am. Uh, I'm going to just cover the highlights of the make here for the helmet. Uh, most of the detail uh, can be found on the Instructables page. I'll put the link below and uh, you can see uh, more detail on photos on how it was all put together. Uh, so go visit my Instructables page. Give it a like. I like. I would appreciate it. And uh, uh, Let's get started. Uh, the helmet, as you know, is 3D printed uh, out of PLA. I use PLA because it just prints so much easier than PETG with the stringing effects and a ABS it tends to have a lot of uh, splits in the layers. It's just too much uh, dinking around to try to get really good prints off of that plastic. So I just go ahead and print it in PLA. I'm not worried at all about thermal stability. This isn't going to be outside in my car on a hot sunny sunny day. Uh, I'm just going to it's going to be an indoor item only. So. I just like the idea that the PLA is a cheaper uh, plastic, it prints well, and I have to finish it anyway, so I might as well just uh, use what works. So I go with the PLA. I printed this on a Creality CR10 printer, which is a 300 by 300 millimeter bed that goes 400 millimeters high. Even uh, with the size of that bed, this had to be printed in um, a number of pieces. Uh, it was split here and then this bottom piece. Uh, so you have two pieces here. Then the back piece, uh, the rear uh, bottom of the helmet, and then the rear top of the helmet right here, and then the visor of the helmet from here forward uh, was made up the helmet. The ring is made up of two pieces, 180 degrees uh, semicircles, and then the individual parts for the gas fitting here in the helmet uh, connector pieces. Uh, those were obviously printed by themselves and uh, this guy was 10% uh, infill these guys were like 100% uh, infill and then uh, this ring was like 75% infill uh, just for stability and strength um, the uh, the settings on the printer were uh, a 0.6 millimeter nozzle at a 0.18 layer height and uh, uh, it seemed to work uh, very well. It was a nice trade-off between print time and uh, 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 layer smoothness, if you will. Um, I then uh, uh, put the uh, uh, the parts together with uh, some of the products I use is uh, Bob Smith Industries uh, uh, epoxy. I, I use the five-minute quick cure. Uh, I believe that uh, Bob Smith Industries uh, epoxy is probably some of the best on the market. It's, it's a pretty decent price, especially if you buy it in mass quantities. So I would uh, recommend uh, those products. But epoxy, no matter which epoxy you use, it does tend to want to release off of smooth surfaces. So I come back with uh, putting like what I call staples or the copper wire across joints. So there's copper wire in here that I heat up on the inside and I press them into the plastic and then I come back and bond them smooth uh, to hold the joints together and that makes a huge difference in the structural rigidity of, of the helmet. So take a look at those photos. I highly recommend uh, that as well. Um, uh, the other glues that I use for like gluing this visor frame in is uh, CA glue. And uh, with the CA glue, I use, uh, uh, well, this is just a, uh, one brand of CA uh, glue with a medium setup time. And then I use an accelerator on parts that I just really want to make sure I uh, just get uh, um, uh, bonded very, very quickly and no fooling around with that. 
that I want to get it to set. So these are just two brands. I don't really have any recommendation if these are any better than anything else. So, um, but the accelerator is really nice for small parts that you want to make sure stick and the part doesn't want to float around and you're waiting for the CA glue to take a hold. So that's what I used on this project. And so after it was all glued together, then you get into Bondo and finishing it uh, for smoothness. I used uh, this product that I got at Walmart this is about less than four bucks a tube and it is made by 3M but this is definitely not the best uh, spot and glazing putty uh, that uh, you can use. Uh, 3M makes uh, another uh, type of uh, putty that is green in color and it's a little bit bigger tube than this. That tube would be like $18 and this is about $4 or, or under $4 at Walmart this tends to be too soft and it tends to not want to really grip into uh, uh, the plastic as well I've had problems with this pulling when pulling out when you're sanding it it just seems to me to be a little bit too soft would not recommend it just sp uh, spend a little bit of money go with the green stuff and I think uh, you'll you'll see the difference if you use the two um, so I'm, I'm not going to be using this anymore Once you have it uh, all bondoed and uh, spot puttied, then you sand it smooth and then you hit it with a can of this uh, primer. I highly recommend the uh, Rust-Oleum uh, line of paints. Uh, they're very uh, tough and they're formulated to work well together. Uh, the primer here uh, works very well with the, uh, the finish coat uh, and I use a satin finish coat. Satin tends to uh, uh, mask any potential runs you might have um, it's just gives it a, I think a finish that's it's got a little bit of a sheen if you look at, in here it gives you a little bit of a sheen but not so much that you're gonna see every little possible paint drip you might have it just gives it a more uniform uh, coating but uh, start with your automotive primer uh, spray the whole helmet and then sand it look at the photos on the instructables link down below and um, it takes multiple passes with the primer and putting and primer and putting until you get all of the imperfections out of it um, and then come back with the uh, the finished coat and follow the directions on this multiple multiple coats uh, it took about five coats to get the the, the depth of uh, finish I wanted on there and uh, follow the directions as far as recoat times you can recoat within 45 minutes to an hour and so if you just give it a light dusting on the first pass, that's more than enough. 45 minutes later, you come back, give it another light dusting, another light dusting. So in a five-hour span, you can paint this and be 100% done with it if you just take your time and give it light dustings until it's completely coated with paint. And th those layers will bond all together and get rock hard, and you won't have any runs. So uh, you spend a lot of time bondoing and putting it smooth so don't rush the paint uh, uh, portion of the project. Some people talk about using this product by Rust-Oleum and I would say the best place for this product is in the can. Rust-Oleum makes good paint but this is not for something that you really want to have like a professional finish on. This is paint and primer uh, in one and it says one can is the coverage of two cans. Well yeah, all right, fine. Uh, this is the same price as the uh, as each of the other cans. So you're paying a little bit more, twice as much. This is like $4.50 at Home Depot uh, as the other cans are. But it's not going to cover and it's not going to stick as well as the other uh, primer system. Uh, this would be more for if you just need something painted real quick and you're not really concerned about how the finish is going to look. So spend a little bit more money and do it right. So once it's all painted and you're done, then you want to put the decals on. And the decals, there's two different kinds of decal sheets you can get from a hobby store. Uh, one decal sheet has a uh, white background, which is what I used here, so that you could see the white behind the words United States and whatnot. Uh, so you just, I got the logo off of the internet, put it on a Microsoft Word file, various sizes until I had the size that I just about right. And then I printed it on my inkjet printer 
And then when it comes off the inkjet printer, because it's water soluble ink, you gotta spray it with a clear coat, a satin clear coat of Rust-Oleum. Let that dry, then you cut it out. And uh, you use a Microsol product, which is this stuff. It's basically a decal solvent. And it's too bad this inventory sticker's on here, but it's Microsol. And you just uh, paint that on this solution onto the helmet and then you put your decal on there, position it, and it softens the decal so that it lays flat on the curved surface so you don't get wrinkles. And it works really good uh, to laying that decal flat. So definitely uh, think about using Microsoft with decal sheets, and that's how I got the decals on there. The visor was probably the toughest part of this project and this build. Um, it's a .080 inches thick uh, acrylic sheet. Um, and uh, uh, the, the easiest way to get the visor in is printing the, the frame first, and then the frame has screws in the corners, uh, and then uh, you put a, a dab of, you, you tighten up the screws so it's a little bit taut so that it can hold its shape, and you put a little dab of uh, CA glue in there, you push this in and you hold it until it, the CA glue sets, and then you have a frame that exactly matches the helmet. When you have that, then I took individual pieces of manila folder and uh, put them in the groove that's in here that holds the acrylic in place, and just pieces of manila folder set in here and all taped together will give you a template, a manila folder template, uh, cardboard template to uh, then pull out of the visor, and then you lay that down on your acrylic sheet, cut it all out, and then you form the curvature by first placing the acrylic into a, a very, very hot water, into a tub of water, and, and having it taped into a, a, a curvature. And that will take a lot of the stress out of the uh, acrylic being bent into that shape. And then to get the final, that'll get you about three quarters of the way bent through here. And then to get the final um, curvature, I cut a plywood, I traced the inside radius of, of the frame here and here. So I had two plywood curvatures and I, I, I nailed them together and I had a, a, basically a form and I just used a heat gun to form the acrylic around that, um, that plywood and, and, a, and then that was all she needed to get the, uh, the acrylic sheet uh, to fit in there. And then I see I glued the, uh, I put it into the frame the frame had enough flexure where I could get it in there. And then I CA glued the, uh, the frame into the helmet and then followed it up with a little bit of black silicone caulk uh, to fill up, you can see it here, um, just to fill in the, 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 the crack, the little gap in here and to make it look like it was perfectly sealed uh, into, in the, uh, into the helmet itself. Inside, um, the helmet is powered by uh, this battery pack, this 5-volt uh, uh, USB phone battery pack. And I just took a, a cable and just put a connector on the end uh, so that it could um, connect to the helmet. And this powers up two fans and the LED lights that light up my face in the, uh, in the helmet. So... Um, I'm going to bring this close here and I hope the camera will do a good job of focusing on this. So this is the connector and uh, there's two fans that bring air in uh, and I have uh, a number of vents cut in here. So here is, uh, here's where a fan is. I cut a, a vent hole there. This is solid. There's the fan number one. Solid. Fan number two. Solid and a vent hole number three. So I got plenty of air uh, uh, intakes. Uh, and then when this, uh, these little fans in here are running at five volts, um, they, they circulate enough air in there where the, the visor will not fog up and I don't feel claustrophobic like I'm, I'm losing my breath. I put this little bit of foam in here to help be a little bit easier on my neck. And I put a bunch of bicycle pad, helmet pads in there as well for the, uh, for the comfort. So let me just plug this in and I'll show you how this looks. So, um, okay, so there are the fan, the fan, uh, the fan switches are right here. 
So that's a fan switch. That's a fan switch. So here and here are the fan switches. And then this is the switch for the LEDs. So when I turn that on, you get the LEDs lighting up on the inside. So um, that the battery pack is sized so that the I, I can run both of those fans um, for quite a long time. This is a this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. So a full charge of this will will run those those two fans for like five hours. So that's more than enough. It's even longer than five hours. I ran it as a test for five hours and it still was going strong and that's pretty much all I need for this when I'm wearing it. So so I can turn these these lights on and off and turn these fans on and off if I need it. And um, so uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and if you have any questions, shoot me an email, put a comment down below, and I appreciate you listening to the video.